The last video introduced one test for convergence, the alternating series test. Then it went off in a strange and interesting tangent about the rearrangement of series. Let me now return to the main topic of the week, how to test series for convergence. I want to start with comparison. I already know some series converge. In particular, I know geometric series converge when the common ratio has absolute value less than 1, and zeta series converge when the exponent p is larger than 1. These are the two most useful series to compare with. For some new series, I might be able to figure out if that series is smaller or larger than one of these known series, like the geometric or the zeta series. Then I might be able to use comparison, having it be larger or smaller, to prove convergence or divergence. Here's how direct comparison works. So assume that I have two series, and all of the terms in both of the series are positive, and all of the terms an are less than the terms bn. This last inequality doesn't necessarily have to be true for all n, it needs to be eventually true. So as long as it is true for all n past a certain point, then the comparison is valid. If the two series are convergent, then the fact that the terms of a are smaller than the terms of b means, of course, that the first sum is going to be less than the second. But how about if they're not both convergent, or at least we don't know immediately if they're both convergent? Well, if the larger series is convergent, that means that the smaller series is also convergent. The fact that all the terms are positive here is important. With negatives, this wouldn't make sense. But hopefully this does make sense. If you're adding up smaller positive numbers than something that already converges to a finite number, well then adding the smaller sum will also converge to some smaller finite number. There isn't enough in the smaller sum to add up to more than the larger sum does, so if the larger sum converges, the smaller one does. Likewise, if the smaller series is divergent, then the larger series must also be divergent. I write equals infinity here to mean divergent, to mean that it adds up to larger and larger number. Infinity is still not a number, but this is a convenient shorthand and pretty standard way to write. I hope this also makes sense. If some numbers add up to infinity, then a larger set of numbers should also add up to infinity. Only these two directions work. The other two comparisons don't help. If a series is smaller than something divergent, well then I don't know anything. I don't know how much smaller it is. Is it small enough to converge or not? Who knows? Likewise, if it is larger than a convergent series, I still know nothing. Well, how much larger? Is it larger enough to diverge? Well, it can't be said. And this is sort of the frustration of comparison. Often, the easy-to-make comparisons are these unhelpful ones. Only these two specific comparisons work, smaller than convergent or larger than divergent. These are the ones that actually prove something. Here's an example. Consider the sum of the terms 1 over n minus 2. I have to start this at n equals 3 to avoid dividing by 0. Now, since n minus 2 is less than n, if I take reciprocals, I reverse the inequality, so 1 over n minus 2 is larger than 1 over n. But 1 over n is the terms of the harmonic series, and the harmonic series is a divergent series. Therefore, I have terms which are larger than another divergent series, and everything is positive, so comparison applies. Larger than a divergent series means that the new series will also diverge. Here's another example. The term here is 1 over 3 to the n plus 4n plus 1. Since 3 to the n plus 4n plus 1 is larger than 3 to the n, I am adding something positive after all, if I take reciprocals then I reverse the inequality again, so 1 over 3 to the n plus 4n plus 1 is less than 1 over 3 to the n. But 1 over 3 to the n is the terms of a geometric series with common ratio 1 third, and common ratio 1 third is less than 1, so that's a convergent geometric series. Therefore, the terms of the new series, which are all positive, are smaller than the terms of a series that I already know is convergent. Therefore, this new series also converges. Here is yet another example. The term is n plus 1 over n squared. n plus 1 over n squared is larger than n over n squared, since adding 1 to the numerator will always produce a larger number. But n over n squared is the same as 1 over n, which is again the terms of the harmonic series, and the harmonic series diverges. So this series has terms which are larger than the terms of the divergent series, so it must diverge. Here is a trickier example. The terms are 2 to the n over n factorial. 
I'm going to assume that n is at least 4. Remember that this comparison only needs to be true past a certain point, so this is a fine assumption. Well then 2 to the n over n can be split into 2 over 1 times 2 over 2 times 2 over 3 and so on. The exponential and factorial have the same number of multiplications, but the exponential is just 2 multiplied by itself over and over again, while the factorial is all of the numbers up to n multiplied together. So I've just grouped those multiplications as 2 over 1, 2 over 2, 2 over 3, all the way up to 2 over n. The first three terms of this work out to 4 thirds. The rest of the terms, 2 over 4, 2 over 5, 2 over 6, and so on, are either 1 half, 2 over 4, or something smaller, 2 over 5, 2 over 6. And there are n minus 3 of these terms after the original 3 are removed. So I can make an inequality. The term here is less than 4 thirds times 1 half to the power n minus 3. I've just substituted larger values, so this is certainly going to give me something um, that exceeds the original. The original is less than this. If I multiply denominator and numerator by 8, well this turns into 30 over 2 over 2 times 1 over 2 to the n. Multiplying by 8 in the denominator adds 3 powers of 2, so n minus 3 becomes n 1 over 2 to the n. But then 1 over 2 to the n is the term of a convergent geometric series, common ratio 1 half, that converges. Multiplying by a constant doesn't change convergence, so these terms are the terms of a series that are convergent, and the new series has terms which are smaller than the terms of a convergent series, so it also converges. This example shows that while comparison is powerful, setting up a comparison is often unwieldy. It took me some clever thinking to figure out a comparison here. Often, finding the right comparison is quite difficult, and much trial and error has to be involved in working out the details of the inequalities. And sometimes, even if you try, there isn't actually a comparison that works, um, even though you're looking for one. This frustration with comparison, and how hard it is to calculate with these inequalities, leads me to the second version of comparison, which is much easier to work with most of the time. This is asymptotic comparison. Instead of direct comparison, where I actually need to calculate a real inequality, asymptotic comparison just cares about asymptotic order. As with limits, working with asymptotic order means that I can focus clearly on the important parts of the term, ignoring any details that don't contribute to the asymptotic order. Then, here is the result. If two series with positive terms, an and bn, have the same asymptotic order, well then they have the same convergence behavior. That is, Either they both converge, or they both diverge. As with direct comparison, most of the comparisons I will make are going to be to the geometrics in the zeta series. If the asymptotic order of a series matches with a geometric or zeta series, well then I'll know its convergence by the criteria for those two series. Here are some examples. These are alternating series, but I want to talk about their absolute convergence, using the term from the previous video, whether they converge without the alternating signs. Asymptotic comparison requires positive terms, so it is very useful for determining absolute convergence. So when I take the absolute value of everything, of course, all the terms will be positive. The first series has an asymptotic order 1 over n to the 6. Well, this is the same as a zeta series with p equals 6, and zeta series converge for p greater than 1, 6 is greater than 1, so this series converges by asymptotic comparison. The second series has an arctangent in the numerator. However, arctangent is a bounded function, so it has the asymptotic order of a constant. Therefore, the asymptotic order here is 1 over n squared, which is also a convergent zeta series, p equals 2, 2 is larger than 1. So this is also an absolutely convergent series. Then consider this last series. Since the logarithm is less than n, in the reciprocal, 1 over ln n is larger than 1 over n. I can do this directly, but I can also do this asymptotically by saying that the asymptotic order of 1 over ln n is larger than the asymptotic order of 1 over n. And the asymptotic order of 1 over n is already divergent, that's the harmonic series. Therefore, this series diverges if I take absolute value, which means that it is not absolutely convergent, it is conditionally convergent. It does converge by the alternating, or alternating series test but it does not converge absolutely by asymptotic comparison.